What is a quantum computer, and how is it different from other computers? Classical computers work with a network of transistors that exist in two states, on, expressed as one, or off, which is zero. All the processing your computer does is expressed in binary as these zeros and ones. Each number is called a bit of information. A group of them is a byte, which we usually talk about as kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes, and terabytes. Quantum computers work differently because their bits can exist in on or off states or both at the same time, which is called superposition. Instead of regular computer bits, these are called qubits. One kind of qubit uses the state of electrons to store information. And electrons don't have to follow the rules of physics as we know them in our everyday experience. But even though they can exist in two states at once, measuring them forces them to fall into one state or the other, which makes the whole quantum computing thing fall apart. It's called decoherence. Electron states can even be entangled, where the state of one is linked to the state of the other, no matter how far apart in space they are. They're like electron soulmates. This complexity of a qubit is what lets them process far more information much, much faster. And unlike classical computers, the power doesn't increase linearly as you add more bits. It increases exponentially. Will you have a quantum computer on your desk anytime soon? No, and maybe not ever. Quantum computing power will be used for image recognition, machine learning, complex problem solving, data encryption, and calculations that find the optimal solution to a complex problem. But quantum computers as a technology will be a bit like rockets. They're useful for getting to space, but you're probably never going to use one to get to work. Unless you work on the International Space Station, in which case, never mind. <laughs>